Welcome to another exciting episode of 4x4 Ventures. In this episode, we're mixing it up a little bit. What we've decided to do is, instead of being so forward focused and orientated, we thought we'd introduce this show off by starting a new category. It's 4x4 Ventures' first episode of a modded section. What this is basically going to do is give you an idea of other vehicles out there and why people have modded them the way they've modded them for specific reasons. In this episode, we chat to Richard about an impressive Jeep that he owns. Now it's set up specific to rock crawling. It's the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited 3.6. Stay tuned and let's go have a look. So here it is, the Black Mamba, and I'd like to introduce to you the owner of this impressive machine, Richard. Richard. How's it Ryan? Thanks for coming to the channel. Thanks and, for having uh, me on the show. Awesome man. So let's start with the basics first. Okay. I think, I think a mod that everyone likes to do and actually should be thinking of doing if they are going to be doing a lot of off-roading is tires. What have you got and why? What we've got with here is the Cooper Discoverer STTs. These are mud terrain tires. So they've got the thick side walls, they've got lugs on the outside to grip on the rocks. Uh, these are 35 inch tires, 35 by 12.5 and they're on 17 inch mamba rims. When you do start modding your vehicles, the likelihood of the fuel consumption increasing, increasing is, is, is really high. So think practical and uh, think we can use your head. Yeah, and not only that, the size of the tire also will increase the drive ratio, so your vehicle will suffer a bit more, yeah. turning a larger diameter tire. I've noticed the same, a decrease in, uh, in power. In power I've, yeah. I've got about a 10% uh, decrease in power, I would yeah. say. And then normally you have to balance that out with gearing. So if you have one or two sizes bigger, it's not really the end of the world, but if you make a massive difference, you'll have to look at re-gearing your axles, which is a costly exercise. 100%. To the side of Richard's vehicle, as per normal and should be, you need side protection. So Richard, you've got some awesome, an awesome set of rock sliders. Yeah. Tell us about them and why you have them fitted. So sure. this uh, Jeep was built by myself and Shane from JK MFG. So what we've done is we've stuck the JKA rock sliders. They create 4x4 accessories. For Jeep? For Jeep, yeah. Right. They do the odd thing here and there, and I think they're branching out now. Yeah. But most of the accessories are for Jeep. So I've seen Richard going over some pretty insane obstacles a couple of weeks ago. And I tell you what, if it were not for these um, insane rock sliders, there would have definitely been undercarriage damage. And you might see it in the footage in the edit as we go along. For those who are interested in getting rock sliders, go and check out JKA Jeep accessories. These guys know what they're doing and they are specific to the Jeep. So do yourselves a favor and check them out. I'll put all the links below, but go check them out. Another great thing when looking at the Jeep is its impressive suspension. Richard, what have you got and why? What we've done with this is a Synergy 5-inch lift kit, a drag link flip kit in the front, which basically when you lift the vehicle, it returns the axle to center right. and, and stops the bump steer from happening. Um, and we've also got the steering damper relocation as well. And tell me, does that come with this Jeep or is it specific okay. to uh, it's a, modding it's a, it? It's a specific mod. So oh, right. yeah, if you lift it over three inches or more, you generally need to have a flip kit. Sure. Uh, what it does is it just moves the 
the drag link from the, the bottom to the top, so it just decreases the angle. Yeah. You lift it, the angle rises like this, and you get bumps here, and the vehicle loses its stability on the road. Yeah. So lifting it over three inches, you want to stick a drag link flip kit in, and 100%. that's what Shane at JK MFG has installed. Okay. And what suspension, I mean, you, what suspension are you using? Yeah, so I've got the Synergy 5-inch coils, and yeah. then we've got the Fox Factory Racing, the 2.5 series with reservoir. You can set it for harder or softer, so it depends what you're doing. If you're doing more high-speed stuff over a little bit of a hoop, then you'll set it for a harder shock. If you're doing slow crawling, you can set it for a softer setting as well, so that you get um, up travel and down travel, and makes it a smoother ride over the rocks. Now I've seen with the Jeep as well, you've got the ability to disconnect the sway bar. The sway bar, yes. Right. And what, what purpose, What? because I mean it's a neat little trick, I mean yeah. there's things over a standard 4x4. It's um, witchcraft. It is, it's, it's, it literally is, blows my mind. Um, maybe tell the viewers why and what the purpose of that is. So the Rubicon comes with a motor which is just under here and basically there's two arms that run down onto the axle and that basically keeps you stable on the road. Off-road you don't want that on because you want to have the most travel. travel that you can. So you push a button inside the cabin, it turns the motor on, disconnects the sway bar and it allows the axle to move more freely. So you get a lot more suspension travel that way. So let's talk about bar work. Richard, I see you've got some aftermarket um, yeah. front bar work. Tell us what you've got and the purpose of this. One of the first things I did was take off the stock Jeep bumper and I've put in a stubby. This is a, one of the first bumpers from JKA, Shane's first design. Oh, so that's manufactured local? It's eh? manufactured locally by JKA MFG, yeah. And uh, it fits the winch nicely, we've got a worn XD9000 winch inside here as well. Uh -huh. And it's a very sturdy bumper, it's been through a lot, needs a bit of a repowder coating but tough as nails. And what I really like about these aftermarket front bumpers, um, First is obviously safety and uh, reliability. They're rather solid. And what it also does is, is it gives you a better ground clearance. So uh, approach angle, if you would. Yes. Um, and then obviously with the winch, I mean, if you go out there and start doing these sorts of things, you know, and you're by yourself, at least the winch can always get you out of the shit when you're in the shit. And I've been there and I didn't have one. And I'll tell you what, as, a, as, a, as an addition to the Ranger one day, when I get a little bit bigger. Richard, I noticed there's a couple of extra accessories that you fitted on. Explain to us what else have you done to the Jeep to make it run and, and look the way that it does. Sure, so one of the performance accessories that I've added is a JKA exhaust pipe. Just added a bit more horsepower. And then I've got a Super Chips that basically allows you to, to set it for performance for economy and it's set for performance. Right, so I think I think the difference between that is that's actually driving the ECU, whereas a pedal box just basically overdrives your um, accelerator. It gives you increased revs for various settings. Because it is a plug and play, it just makes it more versatile for you, the user. Yeah. You, you have the option of pulling it out when you go in to get a service or major software update. Yes, yeah. Uh, what else? I know just you've got a, is it a 52 or a 50 inch? I'm actually not sure. It's a 52 or a 50 inch light bar. That's yeah. from MRO. I've yeah. also got uh, rock, rock lights underneath the fenders. Yeah. That's for when we do the night trails. So you can actually see the ground and someone spotting you can see if your axles are missing the rocks awesome. and that awesome. type of thing. And then uh, I've also got a JKA drive shaft. Especially with the 3.6 Pentastar's exhaust sort of looks like a bugle. Yeah. And when you lift it, obviously the drive shaft's angle is a lot more severe starts knocking against the frame rail and the exhaust um, yeah. so what we've done is it's a thinner heavier duty uh, double card and drive shaft that Jack A make okay. and we've stuck that in um, just to help with the flex and that stuff. For sure, for sure, for sure. So now what advice would you give to the viewers? I mean for all of you out there watching this and you're interested in getting a Jeep or you have a Jeep and you're looking at getting it modded, what things can you advise the viewers when doing these mods? What are the pros and cons? What I would advise is what a lot of the guys do, they buy their Jeeps and they go on the first trail and they see a lot of other vehicles that are bigger, uh, bigger suspension, bigger tires and they immediately rush in and they get a small two inch lift and a slightly larger tire. Then later they feel, okay, they actually want to upgrade it more. They've wasted their time. So rather go for stock in the beginning and then see what you want to do. Uh, don't jump into it too quickly. And when you do, if you go above three inches, make sure you get a decent lift kit. So have you noticed a performance um, decrease? How, what is the handling like on road? I mean, now that you've done all the mods and it's very specific to what, yeah. you, what you prefer to do, what, what's happened to the vehicle now that it goes on it's, the road? Especially lifting it three inches yeah. and above. Mine's sitting at a five inch now, but uh, my last Jeeps I had a three inch lift kit 
you can actually feel bump steer. You will hit a rock on the road, the tire wants to go that way. The tires sort of do this while you're driving. Um, stability when you brake it, nose dives, when you pull off it. Yeah, so putting things on like the drag link flip kits and the suspension geometry parts, track bar relocation brackets, returns the values back to stock and you get the anti-squat back in so when you pull off it's not a boat anymore. It doesn't yeah. shake you around, it's restored. It. So the drive on this is actually pretty good. Here's a point for the viewers out there. I know you're big into 4x4 trails. What's your best 4x4 trail and, and why? Well, one of the toughest trails I've done was Carnage Canyon. That's okay. out in Limpopo. Uh, we were in SA 4x4 magazine for that. Right. And that was quite a decent trail. I think it took us two days to do eight kilometers. Mokhatle is one of my favorites. It's a large track. I mean, you and I have been there together. Yeah, and I tell you what, if you haven't seen that episode, go and have a look at it. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, there's a couple of iconic obstacles, like Cursa Klim, Clip Drift. Some of those are really challenging obstacles. And then this trail we're at, we're at now, Hobby Park. There's the one obstacle there called Survivor, which we'll get into later. Yeah. And that's a steep ledge, a steep rock crawl with a bit of a ledge at the top. And it's actually quite a challenging obstacle. It's also a vehicle breaker if you do it incorrectly as yeah. well. And I've seen that obstacle and yeah, stay tuned because it's a, it's a good one to see. One of the things before going out and doing any adventure driving, whether it be a course or overlanding, when you come into a situation when you need to access 4x4, the first thing that we'd suggest is lowering your tire pressure this this will obviously give you a little bit of more greater traction but um rich is going to show us exactly how and maybe just explain to us why the reasons sure. we, why we need to uh, deflate tires i deflate my tires for two reasons the first reason is these are mud terrain tires so they've got a thick i think these are a three ply sidewall yeah so generally they're pretty hard and rigid if you go over rocks it vibrates quite a bit yeah so we deflate them because it gives you a wider footprint gives you better traction as well tire actually gets softer and it molds over the ground a lot better and then the second reason I do it so that when we go over the bumps I don't rattle my internal organs around. <laughs> I've got this tire valve it basically pulls the valve out of the tire so it releases the air a lot quicker if you use those standard tire deflators you'll sit here and maybe next Tuesday you'll get the, the, the air out of the tire that you need. Yeah I know I, I've noticed that I've got the standard one so basically you just plug it in and you hold it there there's two issues with that for one you can never get a proper grip on the actual tire valve itself so you're always trying to find the best medium or place to put it so that the air can come out and the second issue that I have with those is that it's all well and good but when you got tires this size yeah, there's a lot of air, there's a lot of air. my forearms get really really tight just trying to hold that valve to uh, in place to let the air out so this is great because what this actually does is it actually fastens onto the valve itself disconnects the inner valve pulls it out and allows the air to, to escape like 100 percent so there's no there's nothing in between it to let the nothing out. restricting the flow so just bear in mind when you are going off-road no matter where what or how just remember it is a fundamental thing to let down your tire pressure it will give you that much more traction give you a little bit more of a comfortable ride when inside the vehicle as richard explained um, <laughs> so we're going to head on out there and uh, stay tuned and follow us Right, so we're at Hobby Park and we've come to the famous obstacle number 10, Survivor. And let me tell you, this is an extreme challenge. Now, for the Jeeps, it's definitely more suited. One of the things you've got to remember when doing an obstacle like this, because it's very rutted and jutted, and the degree or angle of slope is between 43 and 49, 49 being at the very top, um, you need great ground clearance. So, you know, good set of tires, good suspension, and you should be able to do this obstacle. What also helps is if you've got front diff lock. So you have both back and front diff lock working simultaneous, just so that you've got push and pull. Uh, this will get you up over the very top. And believe me when I say this camera flattens it out and it really is a, 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 a great incline in slope. One of the things with like buckies, if you are gonna do this obstacle with a bucky, make sure you've got a great uh, departure and approach angle. So basically get your vehicle lifted. Obviously bigger tires will help. But let's have a look at the Jeep and let's see what she can do.
So to end off this episode of 4x4 Ventures, to surmise the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 3.6, it's an impressive vehicle to say the least. Very capable off-road and has the ability to make even the most extreme obstacles look a little bit easy to do and not as challenging as one would think in a normal 4x4 Bucky. As usual, a big thanks to our subscribers for following, sharing our YouTube channel. Without you guys, we wouldn't be where we are today. For those in the know and interested, we have a Facebook page. Just do a search for 4x4 Ventures, one word, and sign up and, and keep up to date with what we do. To Richard, a big thanks for allowing us to shoot his Jeep. Um, without him, this wouldn't have been possible. A big thanks to Hobby Park. Thanks for allowing us to come out here, bring the Jeep and put it through its paces. An impressive uh, 4x4 track to say the least. Graded between, I would say, a 3 and a 5. Um, some obstacles very challenging and some obstacles not if you're in the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 3.6. If you like this episode and appreciate and understand what we're trying to do, then give us a thumbs up. All the information regarding this episode, I'll put in the description down below. Give us a thumbs up, share with friends and family. You know we appreciate it. And until next time, keep trucking and enjoy your next 4x4 ventures. We'll see you at the next one. Cheers. Cheers.